Good evening. Yeah, good evening. It's a, such a beautiful moment that we can connect to your, you and your community in Denmark. And we're sitting here yeah. next, <laughs> we're sitting here next, yeah. to, ne next to Cologne. We're in Cologne, where our community, the main yeah. community, And tonight we've also yeah. linked up with a small community we have in Spain and also another community we have in Ukraine. So we're, we're, it, we're broadcasting through three different locations tonight. That's great. So let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So the first person is, is called Indira, and she's been living in our community for many years, and actually she's the organizer of the community, and she does something we call authentic theater, and also mm -hmm. recently she started her own meetings. Hi, <laughs> Nakunu. So we will see it works, all this equipment. Yeah. You want to say something? So, well, I have a question. We're living here in a community where many people live and also many people pass through. And what I can see over the many years is that uh, it seems like some people, they have a very strong pull um, of finding truth. Yeah, there's a very strong interest. It's like there's a seed inside which is searching for some nutrition. And um, there are other people where this may be for a short time or not so strong. Yeah, And I also, I mean... I have heard about or read about... Some people are talking about old souls and younger souls. So meaning that old souls have incarnated uh, on this planet more lifetimes than younger souls. And therefore it is said that um, yeah, the, 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 the longing yeah, to come home again or the longing for truth, the pull to truth is much stronger for older souls, maybe because they don't get so in, um, distracted by the... Um, mundane things of the life here. So could you say something about this? I cannot talk with authority about past life stuff and old soul or young soul. Um, I don't really know. But it, it seems like there's something like that. But the most important is the longing, whether they are old soul or young soul. The longing must be total. Otherwise, unless you are total, it will not happen. You don't wake up. And sometimes it takes a while. You are in the community and you are among people that also are searching and, and actually you support each other in the longing, sharing your experiences and the longing grows and grows. Uh, but the, the longing must be unconditional, uh, be, otherwise it doesn't happen. Um, and I know John David will give will agree with me. And uh, we, like like me, we were having a long journey with Osho and Papaji, and and the longing grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Just just before my awakening, I decided I don't want to hear anything about it anymore. <laughs> It's enough. No more words about it. Now I will just be with the longing. Um, with the... Yeah. So... Uh, yeah. And uh, for, for... It's so good you are in a community and you can support each other. Because the society is a collective of consciousness. The moment you go out, you go out among people that have no idea about what we are talking about. 
and and they are not in touch with it. They're living in the mind, in language. So it's so important that we gather together in the Sangha. It's called the Sangha, a spiritual family. There are three important things, the Sangha, the Dharma and the Buddha. That, that is Gautama, the Buddha has said that, and it's totally truth. There has to be an enlightened one, and there has to be a teaching which is not really a teaching, and the family. So uh, you're very lucky you are in a community and you can share with each other and you are somehow nourishing this energy all the time. So, uh, and uh, that you have an awakened person there, it's a perfect mirror. Yeah. Satsang or uh, this gathering with an enlightened person is an opportunity to to be mirrored. You are sitting there and listening and feeling the, the, the teacher and maybe there is a moment where you feel the teacher totally and you accept that it is yourself, that you take the projection back. The guru is the last projection. <laughs> Otherwise, you're putting them up and they're fantastic and all, oh, blah, 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 blah. But finally, they are just like you. And you have to make that jump and come back and see that it's a projection. They are the mirror of what is already here in me. It's so important to understand. The guru is not transmitting anything to you. No, it's mirroring what is already in you. So you need a mirror. And how do you know if you need a mirror? If you come to a satsang with a teacher where you kind of feel silent, your mind becomes more silent, then you are with a good mirror that you can use. And maybe you need to sit for 10 minutes or 15 years. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, the guru is the last mirror. Because if you wake up, you also get finished with all kind of projections. They will go also, if you really wake up. Because when you really wake up, you don't see any other. There's not you and there's no, not another, really. So there's nobody to project on. <clears throat> So it was a little introduction and I can already feel there's a little silence at least here and maybe also there in the room. <laughs> so anything you want to have me to talk about? or? Yeah, well, thank you. That was very nice. <laughs> what you said. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, it's like an oasis here, yeah? I also can feel this, yeah? It's like a strong spiritual hotspot and an oasis, yeah? Where everybody can come and dive it's in. It's, you're so lucky, you're so lucky that you, that you have that, that you can keep on supporting each other. Because the moment you go out in society... You go out in unconsciousness mm. and uh, people living in their minds. Mm. So it's, it's difficult. It makes it impossible leaving the community, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're lucky. You, how many are you living there? Well, we are about 20 people. 20 people, okay, yeah. Mm. Maybe some of other of them will... Uh, Ask a question or have me something, have me to talk. Yes, yes, already a lady, the next lady waiting. So thank you very much. <laughs> Indira? <laughs> yeah. Hello, Lakshmi. Yeah, yeah. hello. Lakshmi <laughs> means abundance, yeah. 
It's a very beautiful name. I have a question, and um, as John David uh, said... Turn off the sound. Do you hear me? I hear you. Okay. As John David said, uh, we had a wonderful uh, retreat in the last week. And um, in a very special meditation, I got very empty in my mind. And I felt as if I came home, really. And my question is, how can I embrace this wonderful silence in me? Because John David said, and he's so right, um, don't you, um, not spoil, but don't you um, care for these jewels you found? You see? And my question is, how can I um, hold these, this wonderful silence and uh, not spoil it? Or what can I let go? Okay. In the beginning, it comes as a glimpse, spontaneous. And it, for most people, it disappears again. Then... We, we get more or less desperate to come back to it. And every attempt that you are doing to come back to it will push it away. Yeah. Because it creates duality, what you do. So you have to find ways to invite it somehow without trying to bring the mind too much into it. For me, it sometimes came back when I cried, <laughs> when I have lost yeah. it. Then I mm -hmm. cried, and this crying made my whole psychology relax. Okay. But you have to find out for yourself what, what kind of work for you. Uh, another thing, that uh, it, because the awakening must stabilize, so it's an undercurrent in your life all the time. Whatever goes on on the surface, on appearance, It goes on and on and on, but underneath there is a presence that doesn't change. No. And you are that. All the rest comes mm. and goes. Mm. Yeah. And that presence uh, is, in the beginning, not so easy to keep. Uh, you find ways to keep it. And you must eventually realize that you are that presence. It's not an experience that, oh, yeah, now I feel it. It's an experience. You must be that presence. That's realization. Mm -hmm. It must be a jump inside you. And it can be very sudden and come slowly, slowly. I found ways how to come back into it. And again, mm -hmm. there was this jump where I realized I am it. Mm -hmm. For instance, I will walk in nature It was one of my favorite. There was something with the trees and being in the nature that supports it. It's natural. Mm -hmm. And I learned to just walk there without sinking. You find ways where there's no sinking mm -hmm. because it has nothing to do with sinking. Enlightenment is not an understanding. Mm -hmm. It's, it is a state. And you are it whether you know it or not. It's always there. It's the only thing that is. But we have walked away from it, into the mind, mm -hmm. forgotten about it, and we live in a very low culture that has no idea about it. Mm -hmm. We have to go to India, that's still mm -hmm. a little bit of it. But actually, yeah. you have to go way back, thousands of years, to, to uh, the societies that was once, also Buddha, and Advaita, and... Uh, Because here, we are far away from it. We are so extrovert. And we're living in language and, and mind. So you have to now to start finding ways how you can come back to it. And one way you can do it, you can close your eyes now. Is John David your guru? Yeah. Yeah, close your eyes. And go into this place as much as you can that is silent. 
that is beingness. It's the heart. You take the elevator from the mind down to the heart. As much as you can experience beingness. And then you invite to meet the Guru in the same place in the Guru. You just invite a meeting. Ah. Yeah, it's happening because my body is jumping. Yeah. You invite to meet the Guru in the same place. And maybe just for a short moment, there's no duality. You are one. <sighs> yeah, that's right. <sighs> that is a very direct way where you can keep on, keep on coming back to it until you finally totally accept what I am this. Stay all the time. This is your journey now. Sudden awakening, gradual cultivation. And being with the Guru is a tremendous help. In those days, I just had to think about Papaji or Osho mm. or one of my own other teachers, Maharaji, or see a picture and it came back. <laughs> so slowly, slowly, because you cannot use the mind to it. The mind will push it away. It, uh, it's a matter of the heart. Yeah. It's love. Yeah. Love comes closest to it. Trust. So it's such an unconditional trust. And I, I felt you felt it, right? With, with, with your guru, yeah, with your teacher. Yes. And I can feel it when I uh, give shiatsu. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. So that could be one way you cultivate it. Yeah. Find ways now where you again come back and get established in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get established, get established. Oh, I mm -hmm. cried and I left. And it left me and I found ways to come back to it. One of the Dharma doors I used a lot that came to me that I have also been t teaching people, we can ask everybody to do it. It's, uh, I was walking over the bridge in Lakshmanjula and again doubt came. Doubt is the greatest master that will take you to the very end. Doubt. It will come. And I would say that which I truly am is now taking form of doubt because that's what is happening all the time that that which you truly are this pure consciousness is keep on exploding into consciousness with forms and names what we call maya or appearance this pure consciousness is true who you are and it keeps on exploding into experiences and we forget it We miss it. Yeah. And you cannot get it back by, by trying to grab it or get it. You have to yeah. find ways so you, in a way, seduce it. Mm -hmm. And everybody could close your eyes now for a moment. And just allow your mind to move wherever it does. Maybe it's aware of a body, uh, a sound, a smell, But immediately you will say, that which I truly am is now taking form of a smell, if it's a smell. Finished. Next. That which I truly am is now taking form of a body. Yeah. You got it immediately. You got it. That which I truly am is now taking form of a feeling. Finished. That's, that's, that is the journey of life. It goes on like that. It's us, not the ego, but the, tr the truth that we are, the pure consciousness that creates all this. All this. 
We are all the nature of the mind, the pure consciousness. And it keeps on exploding into experiences. On and on. Work a little bit with it. It is a Dharma door, I call it. A door into the Dharma, into the truth. That cannot be said. The truth cannot be said. You can be it, you are it, but you cannot say it. Because it's the fourth dimension. It's not in this dimension. It explodes into time and space, but it is not. That's why when you wake up, no, you, you don't get, you don't be, become eternal. You don't become eternal. You go beyond all this. You're totally beyond, and has always been. But the body that is experienced, that comes, you get so identified with this body, and so lost. So, find ways now where you can cultivate it. And the Guru is always a great help. Mm. Because it's it's there. Yeah. Good to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I could feel, yeah, you're coming with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for your answer. <laughs> yes, Saraswati, okay. It is the goddess of uh, art in India. Yeah, of course, you play the cello, so you are, you have to be called Saraswati. There are three goddesses, Saraswati, Lakshmi, and Kali. Yeah. What do you want to share or talk about? I have a question what came up. Um, how can I see that I'm the ocean? <laughs> yeah. You will not see it. You will become it. You will... Uh... <sighs> if I go down to the ocean here, 500 meters from here, 400 meters, I'm living very close to the ocean. If I go down to the ocean and just look without focusing and without sinking, then suddenly I am the ocean. But it is thinking that prevents you from having this experience. But it's a good idea to go to a real ocean and, and play a little bit with it. Okay. Go there and just look without focusing. And suddenly, you are the ocean. Yeah. Oh, I'm jumping when, when we have a connection. <laughs> so, and it's great you start when you're young. And, uh, yeah, it is the biggest thing that, that is that we can experience, the ocean. Um, the ocean of consciousness. The oceans of pure silence. There is a saying in one of the old sutras that the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. The great way, enlightenment, is not difficult for those who have no preferences. It means for those who have no desires, no judgments. Mm -hmm. No, I want this, I don't want that. These are preferences, and those you have to start becoming aware of. You cannot fight with them, but you have to see that they are empty, that they are actually impermanent. They are Maya. That's how we wake up. I had a woman yesterday here in a satsang that, um, from Russia, actually, to say that, uh, that when she meet a man that she's really attracted to, she frees, she becomes frozen. And I said to her, okay, close your eyes and relax into this frozenness. Until she met me, she has been fighting with the frozenness, trying to get rid of it. It won't work. You cannot get rid of something that doesn't really exist. 
This frozenness doesn't really exist. It's an appearance. And if you really feel it, it disappears. And there may come a new layer, or you come home. Because at the bottom of all these different experiences and feelings is the real you, because it's the real you that kind of appears as this. Every, every experience is essentially your enlightenment. Essentially. But it appears as differently. So just become aware of all your longings and all your desires and all your judgments and start seeing that they are impermanent. That's what John David and me, we did. We had to do that. There is basically two ways you can wake up, basically. When there is a subject-object, that is the normal way we are living, the duality. I am a me experiencing something, right? That is the normal way people are living. It's a duality. It's a separation. When you feel the body, there is a body, it's an object, and you, the subject, experiencing this object. Subject, object. That is the play of Maya, <laughs> of illusion. And 99999999999% lives like that. So there's two ways you can wake up. You can either see that there is really no object. And that you realize by going totally into the object and experiencing it without thinking. Just experiencing it without thinking. And it will change. And there will come a new object. And you will go totally into it without thinking and feel it and experiencing it. And again, you will see spontaneously that it is changing. It's not real. That is one way. Keep the subject and see that there's no object. You can also keep the object, whatever you are experiencing, and ask who's aware of this object. This is Ramana Maharshi and Papaji very much. Who is aware of this object? And of course you say, I am. Who? Ah. And then you ask the deadly question, but who am I? <laughs> and the mind will give you many answers to it. And again, you will ask, who is aware of this answer? I am. Who am I? Slowly, slowly, you learn to stay just in the pure sense of existing. And you wake up. There's a jump again. Yeah. These are the basic two ways. You can also use both of them, but they are the two ways to, that we wake up. Take the object away and leave the man. Or leave the man and take the object away. You don't take it away, you see it doesn't really exist. And we have no idea about that in the West. We believe there is an outer world that we are a victim of for all this nonsense. It's not so. There is no outer world. It's all consciousness. All day, all day is consciousness. And that's your imagination. You are imagining trees, cars, other people. Yeah. So, uh, ocean. Yeah, it's an oceanic feeling, you can say, to wake up. It's suddenly, oh, it's all me. And in that feeling of me, all the experiences is like oceanic feeling. But... There's no, there's not no fight with anything, because there's nothing really to fight with, and nobody to fight. So, find ways to trust. Only trust can silence your mind. And again, that's when you sit with the guru. When you sit with John Davy and just feel. If you feel a good feeling and start becoming silent, it means that you start getting the point that he's mirroring exactly the same place in you that he is. 
Dat is Guru Sarana. In India, we also have that you just come and sit without saying anything. It's called Darshan. Darshan is literally to just come and see, not with the eyes. Darshan can be translated like come and see. And you see yourself. Mm-hmm. But you have to be open for the possibility to take the guru down from the high chair up there. It's great separation. That was the beauty with Papaji. He was so ordinary. So John Davy and I could not avoid um, to see this naturalness. We, we could not put him up on a pedestal and create separation. And a lot of the guru stuff is this journey of creating separation, creating separation and believing in something, techniques. It's actually, to wake up is so simple. Just be silent. Just be pure trust. And it's there by itself, because it's been there all the time. It was there before your body came, because the, the body is just an appearance in consciousness. It's not physical. And when you die, it will be there. Yeah. We think we are burying somebody here in the West with the body. Oh, it's a, such an illusion. We don't bury uncle. Uncle may be still watching the bury of his body also. <laughs> yeah, I can feel you very much. It's very a joy. And that's the connection. We just keep on until you get it. Until you say thank you. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Rade. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Ah. Let's feel the heart a little bit. Yeah. You just meet me in the heart also. Because we are not separated. We are not two, really. We are one reality that appears as two people, two bodies. But they, these bodies are not real. They are appearance. <laughs> Have you ever seen Krishna Rade dancing? It, it means that they're not separated. Krishna and Rade is not separated. That's why you see them so... I love, I love this. They're not separated. And the flute is Om. The mantra Om. Because the mantra Om is the basic sound of all sounds. It's, it's not really a sound. It's, it's, yeah, it's difficult to talk about, but you will know it. It's something you sense somehow. Om. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I need to read, otherwise I can't manage. <laughs> but that's a good sign when you have left the mind so much that you don't remember. <sighs> I mean, in a way, you already starting talking about this. (laughs) 
Yeah, that's right, eh? <laughs> yeah. No question. What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> I don't know, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm talking, I try to transmit something with the talking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I read my question. <laughs> okay. So in a way you were already talking about. <laughs> so um, uh, many people had awakening, realization, and lost it again. No? So and I myself experienced some of these moments very strongly for a shorter and for a longer time. And it feels like the, the door is open, but easily... Yeah. Possible slipping from one side to the other. Yeah. So, um, yeah, can you speak about what is needed that this realization gets permanent and integrated? Yeah. That's why I called cultivation. Sudden awakening, gradual cultivation. Because awakening always happens suddenly. It can happen in any situation, any moment. Because in, in a moment of awakening, you suddenly realize that you are consciousness itself, not as it appears. That's what happens in an awakening. And uh, it can happen many, many ways. Zen masters sometimes throw people out of the window. And he came after them and sat on them. He pushed them out of the window. And then after he went and sat on the person and said, get it, get it. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, I once had a, 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 um, somebody who came to me that woke up uh, because his girlfriend left him. And he was so devastated that his mind stopped. And suddenly it was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> from one split second to the next this incredible pain was gone and he was absolutely in peace so awakening has often ha also happened like that because it has to do with something that stops the mind it's not something that you don't do often strong moments in life yeah yeah And uh, in, in my very young days, before I knew anything about this, I had borrowed my father's car. I was 18 years old. And at the local ball, I picked up a nice woman. And we drove back to her house uh, where she lived with her parents. And we were sitting down in the living room and just looking into each other's eyes, not touching, not talking. And... When I look back at it, I had an awakening because time stopped. I just loved her so much that my mind stopped. Of course, I didn't know those days what it was. And, but when I look back at it, I can see I had an awakening already then, 18 years old, being with her. And of course, I was ignorant. I believe she was doing something to me and all this. Of course not. She was not. She just mirrored this love that is already in me and it made me totally silent because it stopped the past and the future. So if you are Rade, you are most likely also going with the heart. Love. You have a boyfriend? <laughs> you don't know? I don't have a Krishna. <laughs> 
I don't have Krishna. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, again, find your own ways to come into silence without you are doing it. You cannot be desireless as an effort. You can be desireless by living your desires and see through them. Nobody gets enlightened if they're not living totally. Because desires will hang on and want to be experienced. So you have to go into your desires and see they are empty. That was Osho's fantastic teaching. That lived totally with awareness. Because then he knew that we will see through all these desires. And John David also knows. We did all kind of groups where we lived all the desires, whatever they were. I had making love to many women in the group. And uh, whatever it was the desire. But of course we forgot the awareness most of the time. <laughs> When I was with three naked, three naked, beautiful women sitting there, I forgot all about being present, being aware. I was lost, but uh, I got it. You must see through your desires. That's why you cannot repress anything. You, you don't wake up by repressing. So I do something called non-dual therapy because I have observed over all these years that you can have maybe a glimpse of clarity, but if there is a lot of repressed stuff sitting in you, you must meet it and see through it. Otherwise, it doesn't stay your clarity. So often I go into primal things and whatever is needed because it will sabotage your clarity. If there's anything lingering in your subconscious mind that you have not seen through, the moment you wake up, it will start asserting itself and want to be met. And then you most likely start fighting because it's been a, a habit to do that. So imagine you have a row of people standing in front of a door. They all want to come into the store and they're standing behind each other a long row, and one person slips in through the door. What do you think all the other? Ah, it's possible we can slip in. Yeah. And all these other people standing there, this is also all your repressed stuff. There is no... It's all empty. All that people are struggling with if they meet it directly, relaxing into it, without concepts, without labeling, everything is empty. There's nothing to understand. In India they say, who can understand Maya? Maya is a curtain over the truth. And we have no idea about that in the West. We even don't have a word for it. You have to go to India to get a word for it. So, uh, come in your heart and find ways where you become silent, spontaneously, not trying to do it. That is also a problem with meditating. Because if you are meditating, you are doing something. So there's someone doing something. There's the subject object. So if you meditate, it can be a great way to silence you more and more and more. But eventually you stop and just sit. And don't do anything. Because otherwise the duality continues. And uh, it's not easy. I have been doing so many Vipassana retreats and it's great and it helps a lot to start going in, start going in, start going in. 
But eventually, you had to stop everything. And that creates takes a lot of trust. Okay, let us meet. Keep your eyes closed. And go into this place in your heart. That is silent. That is being. So we, love, we make Krishna Rade now. I am Krishna, you are Rade. And from this place in your heart of being, you invite a meeting with me, with the same place in me. Maybe just small glimpses of oneness. Then come back again to this place in your heart, this beingness, and meet me again in the same place in me. You'll be doing it. That is Krishna Rade. That's what it means. A real meeting. This is a real meeting. Yeah, you are coming very strong. You are coming very strong. <laughs> you are coming very strong. Now you realize what it means, Krishna Rade. It's a real meeting. And I'm, jum <coughs> I'm jumping here because I can feel it. Yeah. There comes such a profound silence. And Rade, this kind of meeting is what we are looking for in our love relationships. But people don't really know. They are talking and they are touching, but this is not meeting. Talking and touching is not meeting. This is meeting. You are very fine. It's a great people you have, John David. Yeah, I was thinking, Nakuna, if you carry on like this, I'm going to have a holiday soon. <laughs> yeah. What to do? <laughs> Rade, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we actually have planned a little bit to chant the Gayatri Mantra for a little while. Would that be okay? Yes, yes. You want to do uh, it now? Yeah, we will. One of my people here will chant it. Okay. And you can just I'm listen. Sure. Just listen. The Gayatri, okay. man, the Gayatri Mantra is a mantra for awakening. It's very, very old. It's the oldest. It's, it's from the um, Matriarchate. Before the Patriarchate, the Matriarchate is 4,000 years old in the East, where it was women. That's why you see Mother Gayatri as a woman. And uh, this mantra makes your mind very, very, very silent. And then when you have been chanting it for a while, you sit in silence. Just sit in silence. Before my awakenings 26 years ago, I have just been chanting the Gayatri Mantra in the morning. And as usual, I was sitting afterwards and have my breakfast, And but then it came, yeah, this awakening. And it never left me, really. But I have had glimpses before, like we talked about tonight. Oh. 
So we have a young woman now, she's 19 years old, and she's here as a guest. And as a guest? As a guest for some short oh. time. And as you see, she, well you will see, she has, a, she has an interesting question. <laughs> what is your name? Lily. But I thought I already changed my question, but <laughs> when John David said it's an interesting question, then I can also ask this and maybe then afterwards the question which came out again or oh, right now um, so my question was do you see yourself as a teacher and how you deal and if yes how do you how do you deal with if your student starts depending on you oh yeah, I definitely see myself as a teacher. It was not something I chose. It just happened. I was a therapist to begin with. I've been a therapist for 47 years. And um, I am also having a bachelor in psychology and all this. A master in philosophy. and um, But in the beginning, I worked with therapy. And uh, I liked it, and uh, then I came to Pune, and I did a lot of therapist trainings there. Uh, and when I came back from Pune, I started doing even more therapy, and I could live from it. I also became a Pune therapist. And uh, so uh, that's how my life was unfolding and um, then what happened was that this awakening came and my way of teaching changed. It just changed because I changed and people that came to me was different. Um, so it was never really a choice. It was just <laughs> my life unfolding. And of course, when I, when I became a, a Puna teacher, it was very difficult for me because I had so much inferiority. 
And how could I ever be a teacher like these incredible teachers there to re uh, and what is the t theater and their names? That was a. And then I remember Osho one morning talked about that the therapists are suffering from the same problem as the clients. <laughs> and that was a great help for me. Uh, that um, I could be allowed to have all my problems <laughs> and I still work with people. <laughs> so uh, I, I somehow never chose it. And if you look back at your life, really just have have there been have you been choosing anything or has it just happened yeah yes it's choosing to me life is a conspiracy this conspiracy has brought you to john david and the community now lucky you because there is no personal doership really we believe so but there is not. There's only God. There's only this pure consciousness. So life is a conspiracy. <laughs> we believe that we are choosing things, but it's not so. And it's tremendous to realize one that, that there never was anybody choosing anything here. It's uh, no personal doership. Because in that moment... There is a spontaneous forgivingness of anybody you have met in your life. Because at the same moment, you will realize, but they also did not choose to do what they did. And there is no need to fight with any techniques of, of, of uh, forgivingness. It's one split second. When you realize that you are not a personal doership, the whole people, all the people you have met, is the same. And there is a spontaneous forgivingness, totally, without doing anything. It just slips away. All your blame you used to have with your mother, all the blame you had on your father, or whoever, boyfriends, or you will realize, but my God, it was all a conspiracy. <laughs> I, there was no personal doership really existing. That's what you realize when you wake up. And then you go on doing whatever you're doing. But it will be very different, very spontaneous, very free. It's not that you don't suit do anything, of course. You will do, continue to do. Thank you. And can I also ask the question which came up when I was listening to you? Like mm -hmm. there was another one. Um, it was like when I feel pain inside me, um, I sometimes find it hard to um, keep the balance of not repeating an old story and also letting free the oppressed feelings. Like I think sometimes you start to get in your thoughts if you feel in the pain and then it just came up come up way more strongly and you get identified with it but how do you deal with like refreeing yeah. these feelings and not oppressing them could you connect with this pain now see if you can connect with it and then feel it don't think about it. Don't analyze it. Don't try to get rid of it. Just say yes to it and feel it. Experiencing it. Until it changes into a new layer, a new feeling. Because it will. Ah! <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> feel this feel this space now you are in feel it close your eyes yeah feel it you feel good 
or what? What make you laugh? What made you laugh? What kind of feeling came? Um, like that I gave myself the space and then there was the freedom inside. So this was like... Yeah, keep the right close. <laughs> and feel, feel this freedom. And then say in your own language, in German, I am freedom itself. I'm not a person that is free. I'm freedom. Say that and feel it. Ich bin Freiheit. Ich bin Freiheit. Stay there. Feel your heart. And invite this feeling we started with, the negative feeling. Invite that feeling into this place you are now. And see what happens. Invite that feeling into this place you are now, into this freedom, and see what comes out of it. This pain. Yeah. Be what comes out of it. Is it comfortable? Yes. Yeah. Now you're very close to who you are. Because when you are really in who you are, whatever you experience disappears into you. And it just expands you. Yeah. Feel that expansiveness. <sighs> This is a very direct way to have a Satori or an awakening. <sighs> This is one of my most used way to work with people. Feel the impermanence of this experience that you are struggling with and go to the bottom of it and you are free. There's silence. Because all experiences are essentially your enlightenment. There's nothing else but the truth. All the rest is appearance and is unreal. The whole world and everything you are sensing is is unreal. It's like a dream. That you will realize. And when you realize that, there will be no body to come back to. So when you die, you don't come back to a body. But there is no body to come back to. You have seen through all of it. That's why Ramana on the question he was asked when he was dying, where are you going, Ramana? And he said, where can I go? <laughs> Cannot go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, you are fantastic. 19 years old. And in Germany... <laughs> Many, many sannyasins came from Germany. And uh, John David and I saw that. Scheiße, scheiße, scheiße. <laughs> They were screaming and screaming. <laughs> anger, anger, anger. And I tell you, when we built the ranch in America, Osho's place in America in Oregon, Uh, before this first summer festival, we were building some wooden platform that we could put a tent on. And of course, we had to build many of them. And we were teams. The Germans could build six platforms while the American could, could build one. <laughs> <laughs> They, because the American was laughing and telling jokes and Germans... Serious. <laughs> Serious business. Working. They, amazing. Okay, hey all. Yeah. Are you also German? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, just take a little while and allow the body to ah, digest or relax. relax. Ah. When I look into your heart, I can see that you are opening and closing it. The heart cannot be hurt. Nothing can hurt the heart. There's no need to ever close it. Because it cannot be hurt. So open it unconditional. Nothing can hurt your heart. Because Essentially, the heart is not seeing any separation to anything. The heart says, oh, this is also myself. So there's no need to protect the heart, like we learn in our culture. Oh, you must protect the heart, blah, blah, blah. It's just nonsense. Nothing can hurt it. And I can see a little bit in your heart, the movement of opening and closing it. Is it true? Is it? Yes. You can recognize what I say? Yes. Yeah. What do you mean with heart? Yeah, that is true. It's not really the physical heart. It's difficult to talk about if we could call it the heart, heart chakra. But it is definitely something that is associated with your chest. Um, but it's not the pumping organ. So Ramana called the spiritual heart sitting on the left side as a way to avoid this, that people are identified with the physical heart. But in my work over the years, I can see <coughs> that people start with the physical heart, the pumping organ. Then they start, if they are daring enough, trusting enough, they start coming into sorrow and love. And then some goes even deeper into the space of pure awareness. That is the nature of the heart. The heart is non-dual, it's pure awareness. When we wake up, we wake up in the heart. But often we have to go through all kind of struggle to open this heart. I had so many girlfriends that killed me because I was very, very, very stubborn and very closed. So many women left me crying, desperate, and it forced me to go deeper in. I'm so grateful to them today. They left me with another man. And Pune was a dangerous space. You can just ask mm -hmm. John David. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a minefield. Yeah. So you get involved with love, love affairs, also with a woman. Dare to love, totally. Because it will open you up. And if there are any hurts, it will be exposed. Because when women left me, the last one, I had to meet everything with my mother that I could never trust her. It came up. Yeah. Mm. So uh, it was an incredible help. I said thank you to her afterwards. <laughs> Life is a conspiracy for awakening. And when I had awakened, 
Then she came back and wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> Can we not start for, from the beginning now? She said to me. <laughs> yeah. What else you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Find a moment that kills you. <laughs> that you cannot go get away. That you are murdered on the spot. <laughs> it's all a conspiracy for awakening. Poverty used to say that uh, many of us has been sadhus in past lives and sadhus is of course avoiding anything that has to do with sex or anger or these things. So we had to be reborn in the West to encounter it and somehow could be his true because he met also a woman when he was up in the 50s, he, he met Mira. She was only 18 years old. Mira came to Rishikesh and said to the taxi driver, take me to the place where the gurus are. 18 years old. And the taxi driver drove her to Rishikesh. And she went on to a little island in Ganges and said, I'm going to sit here until my master comes. And sooner or later, Papaji turned up and looked at her and said, let awareness embrace awareness. Let awareness embrace awareness. And they got married and had a children, had a, had a child. That was something there Papaji also need to live out. So, um, can we have something you want to talk about or anything you want me to say about whatever? Om Shanti. <laughs> shanti, Shanti. Silence, silence. Just say something, whatever could be, we can use it. I don't know. I love you. I love you. <laughs> That's all I can say. I Who I love. <laughs> very, very great. Keep your eyes closed and feel that I am a mirror for your love it arising in you. I don't do anything, I'm just here as a mirror. And it mirrors the love that is in you. Great. Feel that love, relax into that love. It's you. You just found a mirror for your love. Sooner or later, if you relax into this love, it will be silence. Love is very close to the source, but it's not the source. Some people say that the source is love. It's not true. It's, but it's very close. Real, unconditional love is very close but it's still in the realm of experience. 
So you go a little deeper into the silence. Yeah. Yeah. Love is incredible help to silence you. Because it's fulfilling. So the desires stop when you really love. So there's no future and no past. You're to totally here. And the last thing can happen into who you are. This is my understanding. I know Rumi talk about love, uh, but uh, love is not the source. The source is not love. It's close, close. And maybe he, he talks about it for a reason. So, Because to talk about source is very difficult. So we will lose people. They will not come with us. They cannot understand. Love, trust, and all these things are very close to source. Can I let you go? Yeah. Yes. So I'd like to I'd like to make a big thank you for your, this master class. Mm -hmm. On behalf of everybody here, I'm sure they feel the same as I do. It was a wonderful master class, and I'm booking a holiday tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Actually, it's true. I'm going to Spain on Tuesday. I'm going to Spain on Tuesday. I've forgotten. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Working holiday. Working holiday. <laughs> Wonderful people you have around you. Yeah. So beautiful. It was an honor to be here, and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much for mm. wonderful meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I let you go. Okay, we let you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.